These are the odd numbered problems for chapter four. Number one says, in words, explain what is measured by each of the following. SS, we've learned from our reading that SS is the same as the sum of squared deviations. So just to take a second to recognize what that looks like as um, a mathematical procedure, we would see sigma, the sum, x minus the mean, if a uh, mean of a sample, squared. Now, of course, we could have sigma x minus mu if we're working with a population. And again, just to um, further note that x minus the mean of a distribution represents deviation. The difference between a score and the mean of a distribution. Again, chapter four is all about measures of variability. We want to calculate these measures of variability such as range and variance and standard deviation to get a sense of the consistency or inconsistency of scores. In other words, how similar are the scores to the mean of that distribution or how different are the scores um, in that distribution in comparison to the mean. So again, SS, the sum of squared deviations, and mathematically we would compute it in this manner, recognizing that a deviation Score is simply x minus mu, the difference between a score and the mean of a distribution. Variance. Variance represents the mean of squared deviations. So in the previous one, we described what ss is equal to and how we would calculate that. So we should understand that variance, if um, we're talking about a population, variance is equal to SS over N. What I want to point out here is just like we would calculate the average of scores, we would take the sum of scores divided by how many scores we have, which produces an average. This is similar. Here we have in the numerator the sum of squared deviations, and the denominator represents how many devi squared deviation scores we're working with. Now if it's a sample, things are slightly different, and we'll talk more about the variation in, in, in a subsequent question. So it would be SS divided by N minus 1. So briefly, the N minus 1 is simply a way of making this statistic, the variance of a sample, um, unbiased. So bringing it closer to what the actual variance would look like if we had access to population data. And finally, standard deviation. Standard deviation represents the average difference between all scores in a distribution and the mean of that distribution. So again, it's providing the standard difference between all x values in a distribution and the mean that represents all of those scores. And mathematically, it's simply the square root of our variance, which should make sense because the variance is the mean of squared deviations. If we want to bring that back into original units, in other words, get um, do away with the squared units, we take the square root of our variance. So whether we're working with a population, right, it would be the square root of our variance, or a, a sample. Standard deviation of a sample is equal to the square root 
of the sample variance. Question 3. Is it possible to obtain a negative value for the variance or standard deviation? Again, given the definitions in the previous problems, we recognize that what we're calculating are averages, and these averages are derived from positive numbers. So we understand that variance Let me uh, draw that a little more clearly. Variance and standard deviation are measures of distance, right? The deviation is the distance between the score and the mean. So for example, um, again to stress why it wouldn't be negative, for example, if we have a distribution with a mean of 5 and we have a score x equals 3 that score deviates or is different from the mean by negative two points. So if we can just visualize this for a second, we have the mean of our distribution, five, and we have a score of three, x equals three. So we're talking about the distance from here to here, and that would be negative two points. So our deviation value can be negative, but um, what we do with that deviation score to calculate variance is we square it, right? And so any deviation score that is negative will then become positive. Okay, so when, when we calculate variance, all deviation scores, again deviation scores are x minus the mean, all deviation scores are squared, which produce positive numbers. Okay, so again, the question asks if it's possible to have variance and standard deviation represented as a negative, and the answer is no. And again, the reason is that the process we have to engage in to calculate variance requires that we take all scores, all deviation scores, and square them. So by doing so, when we do have a deviation score that's negative, it then becomes a positive number. Okay, as indicated um, previously, sample variance is calculated by taking our SS divided by N minus 1, which is different than the population variance. which is derived by taking sum of squared deviations SS over capital N. 
So in 5, we are asked to explain why the formula for the sample variance and population variance are different. First, we must recognize that samples, even if they're representative, do not include all scores in a population. I'm sure that's very evident, right? It's a sample. It's a subset of the population. So we don't expect it to include all x values. Um, and therefore, when we calculate the variance, we produce a biased statistic. In other words, if we used, if we used the following equation to calculate variance, sample variance is equal to SS over N, that would produce a biased statistic. We would produce a biased and that statistic, so a biased statistic that consistently underestimates the corresponding population parameter. Again, just to reiterate, the sample variance is representing the average um, squared deviations between all deviation scores and a distribution. Um, and obviously, the population variance does the similar thing. However, recognizing that samples don't include all scores, all scores will produce more variability. The more scores you have, the more variation you are to have as well. Therefore, if we simply divide by n, we will underestimate what the actual population parameter looks like. So we correct this bias mathematically. So for example, um, if we divide by a smaller number, the quotient increases. So again, we correct this bias by reducing the value of the denominator. which thereby increases the quotient. Example, if we were to take, let's say, 20 divided by 5, 20 divided by 5, we get 4. But if we reduce 5 by 1, 20 divided by 4, we get 5. So again, when we increase our denominator by one value, we increase the quotient. So mathematically, this is what we're doing. And the reason we do that is to address the bias that we would 
that would be reflected if we were to calculate our variance by, if, by dividing by n instead of, as we see here, n minus 1. So n minus 1 is uh, allowing us mathematically to inflate that statistic so that it is a better representation of the population parameter. Number seven, on an exam with a mean of 78, you obtain a score of 84. Would you prefer a standard deviation of s equal to 2 or s equal to 10? In order to answer this, we are given a hint that sketching distribution and finding the location of your scores will aid you in understanding which distribution you'd rather belong to. So again, we have distributions with a mean of 78, and they vary in the deviation. So one has standard deviation of 2 and the other 10. So let's consider this. So the first one, visually, if we plot what we know. It's a more consistent distribution, so I'm going to have the peak um, higher. And we know that the mean is equal to 78. In the first example, we consider standard deviation equal to 2. So if each standard deviation is equal to 2 points, if we went out one standard deviation <clears throat> from the mean, that would put us at 80. Our score is 84. So in fact, if we went out another standard deviation, that would put us at 82. And then finally, our score of 84. So again, we're considering if we were to score 84, on an exam. This is where we would place in terms of what the mean is for the distribution and the score um, that we earned. So in this case we would actually be one, two, three standard deviation units from the mean. Three standard deviations from the mean. Which, if we think of the mean being the average score like a C, if we're at 84, if we are three standard deviation units from that, we're very unique in com uh, compared to the average student. So that's what we understand visually there. Now if we consider a distribution where the standard deviation is equal to 10, again, I'm going to draw this um, a little flatter, right, because the standard deviation equal to 10 implies that we have a more diverse distribution, that we have greater variability. So our standard deviation is equal to 10. Again, our mean is 78. Our score is 84. But first, let's plot where the uh, one standard deviation unit would place us numerically. So if we went out up one standard deviation, then we know that that score, so 78 plus 10, would put us at 88. Right? 88. And our score is somewhere in here, right? 84. Okay, so again, greater variability puts us in the more common region within one standard deviation unit. Again, we're not distinguishing ourselves from the average person because we are within one standard deviation unit, in this case, with a standard deviation of 10. Anything above 88 would be considered outside of that normal um, range. Again, normal range is within one standard deviation unit above and below the mean of a distribution. Therefore, we would conclude that in this case, we would prefer to belong to a distribution that has smaller variability denoted by standard deviation equal to 2. Okay, in the next um, scenario, if your score were 72, x equals 72, would you prefer to belong to a distribution with standard deviation equal to 2 or 10? And then uh, we'll explain our answer. So again, visually, we'll represent this distribution to be more consistent with less variability. Again, that's denoted by the fact that we understand the standard deviation equal to 2. 
So let's plot the mean. The mean for the distribution is still 78, as in the case of the two previous examples. And our score is 72. So again, if we go one standard deviation below that, we will, let me just uh, clear that so I have a little bit more room. So again, the mean is 78. If we go one standard deviation below, that puts it at 76. And again, if we go another one, that puts it at 74. And then finally, one more standard deviation unit would place us at 72. That's our score. So we see that we're one, two, three, three standard deviation units below the mean. Again, in the previous example, it was from the mean, but it was on the positive. Here, we're placing ourselves, because of the lower variability, we're outside of that normal range, normal range denoted by one standard deviation unit above and below. We didn't fall in that range. In fact, we are well outside of that range, but on the negative side, meaning that we're scoring well below the mean three standard deviation units below the mean. So if you think of this as a normal grade, letter grade scale, so the mean would be a C, and then D and F, that's where we would be placed if the standard deviation were low, and in this case equal to two. So let's consider the case of placing ourselves in a distribution where standard deviation is equal to 10. Again, greater variability denoted by the sketch. It's more stretched out, more variation scores. So again, we have a mean of 78. And if we go one standard deviation from there, that would place us at 68. And we recognize that our score of 72 is in here. Um, so again, placing us within one standard deviation unit, one standard deviation unit in this case is equal to 10 points, places us in the average range, in other words, the common region of the distribution. So we are scoring close to the average when there's greater variability. So in other words, when we are um, looking at scores below the mean, we would prefer to be part of a distribution with greater variability, so this would be the ideal. When we are in the previous example talking about scores above the mean, then we want to belong to a distribution with less variability so that we, our score is more unique and, and we distinguish ourselves as being different on the positive end. In this case, we certainly don't want to distinguish ourselves from being really different from the mean on the negative side scoring well below the mean. We'd rather this scenario where we are placed within the normal range of one standard deviation unit above and below the distribution. So again, we would prefer to belong to a distribution where the standard deviation is equal to 10. And hopefully I've explained the reason why. It, it, it relates to the distance from the mean but again, we recognize distance from the mean could mean positive numbers or negative numbers. And the greater variability there is in the case of being on the negative side places you in a more normal range. When we're in the positive side, lower variability will put you outside of that normal range. Number nine, for the following population of n equals six scores, sketch a histogram showing the population distribution. Then locate the value of the population mean in your sketch and make an estimate of the standard deviation. All right, so we're going to consider what this um, would look like, our frequency, the ordinate, our x values on the abscissa. And we have um, frequency, the highest frequency is three, so we don't need to go any higher than three. And our x values range from one to four. Okay, and we are going to now indicate the frequency for each score. So we have one occurring once, 
2 occurring 0 times, 3 occurring 3 times, and 4 occurring twice. Okay. All right, and now we're asked to calculate or find the population mean. So mu is equal to the sum of x over n. We know what n is equal to. We have six scores. Now we just need to take the summation of our scores here. So 3 plus 1 plus 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 in our calculators, we get 18. So we get an average score for this population distribution equaled to 3. Mu is equal to 3. All right, and now we're asked to estimate what the standard deviation would be equal to. Again, standard deviation equals or represents the average difference between scores in the distribution and the mean of the distribution. So what we want to do is look at the range of deviation that we see here in our distribution. So the closest score to the mean is 4, so that's a deviation of 1 point. And then the score that's furthest from the mean deviates from the mean by 1, 2 points. So we would estimate that the we estimate that the actual that the standard deviation, the actual standard deviation, whoops, uh, we're working with the population, the actual standard deviation of the population is between 1 and 2 points. We may think 1.5 points. Okay, and so by doing this activity, we, we can see that we can get a sense of ca the actual calculated standard deviation for a distribution by looking at what's the score that's furthest from the mean and what's the score that's closest. Because again, standard deviation represents the average deviation from, of all the scores in relation to the mean of that distribution. Okay, continuing with number 9, C says compute SS variance and standard deviation for the population. How well does your estimate compare with the actual value of the standard deviation of the population? I'm going to solve this using both the definitional formulas and the computational. So we can see how both can be applied. I tend to use the computational more readily simply because it is faster but we um, should know both, so I'm going to demonstrate both. I'm going to set it up um, as logically as I can here where I have my x values represented and my x values include 3. We don't need to put them in order because we're, we're um, not looking for the median. Um, 1, 3, 4, I'm just listing them the order that we see them up here. 3, 1, 4, 3, 3, and 4. Okay. Again, in order to calculate um, sum of squared deviations, right, SS is equal to the sum of deviation scores that have been squared. Okay, so my first task is to calculate my deviation scores. So X minus mu is the first thing I need to do. And again, we know what mu is equal to. Mu is equal to 3. So I'm going to calculate my deviation scores. So considering the equation x, my x value of 3, right here, this is where I am. 3 minus 3 gives us 0, deviation of 0. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 4 minus 3, 1. 3 minus 3, 0. 3 minus 3, 0. 4 minus 3, 1. And I want you to note that if I were to take the sum of my deviation scores, right? if we take negative 2, add 1, 
and another one, we will always get zero. So again, recognizing that mathematically, this is why we need to square our deviation scores, um, which is how we produce variance, the average of our squared deviation scores. Because if we try to sum up our deviations, we'll always get zero. So our, our mathematical solution, as we've learned from our reading, is to square all those deviations. So we square all of our deviations, and now we're working with positive numbers. Again, going back to a, a previous question, asking why or if we can um, calculate a negative variance value or negative standard deviation value. This is the reason why, because even though we have deviation expressed as a negative, we always square those so that we can calculate our variance. So first of all, we need to calculate sum of squared deviations. We've squared all our deviations here in this last column, and now we can take the summation of all values, all the deviation values that have been squared. So if I take 4 plus 1 plus 2, 1, we get 6. So this is equal to 6. Given that statistic, we can now calculate our population variance. Population variance is equal to SS over N. So we have um, 6 represents SS, and we have, again, N is equal to 6 points. So we have variance is equal to 1 point. Okay, again, this represents the average of squared deviations. And finally, we would like to represent that in original units. So to do so, we simply take the square root of our variance. The square root of 1 is equal to 1. So this represents, on average, our scores in the distribution deviate from the mean by one point. Let's consider that. Again, the, the mean was equal to 3. And we go back to our original scores, and we see how they deviate, right? In some cases, they deviate by 0 points, 0 distance, when we have scores of 3. But when we have a score of 4 or 1, we do have some deviation. So on average, this is what we're calculating. On average, all of these scores in the distribution differ or deviate from the mean of 3 by 1 point. Okay, continuing with the same problem, I simply want to use this data to um, demonstrate the computational formulas for calculating SS. So again, doing the same as we did um, in the previous example, we want to calculate the sum of squared deviations and standard devi and variance and standard deviation. So I'm going to organize my data. My scores are 3, 1, 4, 3, 3, 4. And now using the computational formula, SS is computed differently. SS is the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared over n. Again, the computational formula is much faster. It saves you one whole step per score. However, it lacks the conceptual um, application of deviation. So in this equation, we don't see any deviation scores being calculated. And our understanding of SS is the sum of squared deviations. So though it saves time, conceptually it's easier to process the definitional formulas first before we move into using the computational formula. All right, so given this equation, um, I recognize that in this case here, right here, we're asked to square all of our scores. Again, no deviation being calculated. We're squaring all of our scores and sigma indicates that we must sum all those squared scores. So this becomes 9, 1, 16, 9, 9, and 16. Okay, so then if we take the sum of all scores that have been squared, if we do the addition here, add all, all of these values here, we should get 60. Okay, so I'm going to start replacing variables here. So SS is equal to 60 minus, 
here in the parentheses, we should have that value um, from our previous calculation of the mean, right? The mean of the population was sum of x over n. And I highly recommend that when you are calculating the um, sum of squared deviations that you will have probably already calculated the mean. So just go ahead immediately and take that summation and put into the parentheses. This will minimize any errors students make when they confuse the sum of the sum of scores squared versus all scores that have been squared in the summation. So again, from your equation of calculating the mean, take that summation of sum of x, and in this case we know that's 18, put it in the parentheses, and that will minimize mistakes. n is equal to 6. Okay, so let's address the um, square here. So we would say 60 minus 324 divided by 6. Okay, so again, um, address that. Um, so we be, it becomes 60 minus 324 divided by 6. We should get 54. So 60 minus 54 gives us 6. And this should look familiar from the previous example. Um, the sum of squared deviations, regardless if you use the computational formula or the definitional formula, should be identical. And I highly recommend that you do a couple of problems um, using both to ensure that you see that they are equal. If they're not equal, then something's gone wrong in your calculations. So again, if we want to calculate the variance of the population, it's SS over N. 6 over 6 gives us 1. Standard deviation is the average difference um, between scores in the distribution and the mean in the distribution, and that simply is derived by taking the square root of our variance. So square, square root of 1 is equal to 1. So our estimate of um, the original standard deviation using the furthest deviation and the smallest deviation gave us something um, between 1 and 2. We could say 1 and a half. So our estimation, estimate of the original standard deviation was pretty close because the actual is 1. All right, number 11, we have a population with six scores. We're asked to calculate the range and the standard deviation. We're actually presented two um, equations for the range, but I'm going to stick to the one that says take your high score and subtract low score plus one. And if we apply that, our high score is equal to 11 minus low score of 0 plus 1, we get 12. And so that represents the range of scores that we're working with. Next, we're asked to calculate um, the standard deviation. I'm going to use the computational formula. Again, uh, as I stated before, it's a little faster. And since I've already done an example using the definitional, I'll try to save time. So we have um, our x values of 11, 0, 2, 9, 9, and 5. So I'm going to calculate, to calculate the standard deviation, I first need to calculate our sum of squared deviations, which is the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared over n. So we're going to square all our values. This is 121, 0, 4, 81, 81, 25. So if we take the sum of all scores that have been squared, all scores that have been squared, we should get 312. And we are going to need the sum of our x here. If we take the sum of all x values, the summation of all x values gives us 36. Again, I had said that it's a good idea to calculate the mu. So sum of x over n 
mu is the sum of x of 36. We have six scores and we get an average of six. And again, the purpose of doing that first is to replace variables efficiently. So here we have 312. The sum of x, right, will be put into the parentheses 36. We're going to square that over 6. Okay, so if we calculate 36 squared divide by 6, I believe that's 312. Oops, 216. It's 312 minus 216, excuse me. 312 minus 216. So in your calculators, we should get that equal to 96. Okay, so we've calculated the sum of squared deviations. Um, now we want to calculate the variance, the average of those squared deviations. So it's SS over N. We get 96 over 6, and I believe that is divided by 6, 16. Now we want to bring it back to original units, and we recognize that standard deviation, the average difference in original units, is equal to the square root of our variance. The square root of our variance of 16 gives us the standard deviation equal to 4. All right, um, the next part of this question asks that we change the distribution slightly by um, scaling the distribution up when we add two points to every score. Okay, so for 11b, uh, we're asked to change this distribution. We're going to increase it by adding two points to every score. So we have our x values, our new x values. So we're going to add 2 to every score, so we get 13. 2, 4, 11, 11, and 7. So we've created a new distribution by adding two points to every score. So we're asked to find out what the effect is on our range. So again, now our range is equal to high score minus low score plus 1. So our high score now is 13, our low score is 2, and then we add 1. So we should still get the same range as we had in the previous example. And the reason is that when we add scores to add scores, a constant, to every score in the distribution, the distribution is just shifting upward. If we subtract, similarly, it would be shifting downward. But the space between scores does not change. Again, the space between scores does not change. So if the space between scores isn't changed, we should not see a change in the variability. Here, range is one measure of variability. And again, we see that, that nothing has changed in terms of the range of scores or the variation in scores. Um, but let's go ahead and continue by calculating the um, SS for this distribution, right, the um, sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared over n. And uh, we already know some of these values, so we can go ahead and replace it. We know the, well, actually, we don't know what the new sum of x is, considering we added scores. So we will add what our new x values are equal to and square all our values. So let's start there. So 13 squared, 169. 2 squared, 4. 4 squared, 16. 11 squared, 121. 121 and 49. So we can take the sum here, sum of all scores that have been squared. So 169 plus 4 plus 16 plus 121, 121 and 49. We should get 480. And if we take the sum of all our scores here, take the summation here, we should get 48. Okay, so again, check, check these values in your calculators to make sure everything is accurate. And now we can replace variables. So the sum of all scores that have been squared is 480 minus 48. We're going to square that value and divide by how many scores we have in this distribution, which is equal to 6. So SS is equal to 480 
We take 48, we square that value, divide by 6, and we should get 384. So again, 48 squared, <clears throat> excuse me, divided by 6, 384 subtracted from 480, <clears throat> we get 96. And at this point, we see that the um, sum of the squared deviations is illustrating that we don't have any difference in variability. Again, we just shifted this distribution upward by adding a constant to every score. But that has no effect on the spread or deviation between scores and the deviation between scores and the mean of the distribution. Nonetheless, we'll continue with our calculations here. Variance is SS over N. We have 96 over 6. We get 16. And our standard deviation is the square root of our variance. The square root of 16 gives us 4. I'm going to, on the next page, give you some uh, rules that you can use so that you don't have to do these calculations every time we change a distribution by scaling upward, by adding or, or multiplying by a constant, or scaling distribution downward by subtracting or dividing by a constant. Okay, so to end these problems, I just want to provide the um, rules that you can use to determine the effects on the mean and standard deviation of the distribution when you add, subtract, multiply, or divide by a constant. Okay, so I'm going to use the notation for a sample mean because we'll be using samples more readily. So the new mean will be equal to the original mean and added or subtracting a constant. Okay, so as we would expect, if we're adding scores, uh, a value to every score, the sum of x is going to change. So we expect the mean to change. And here's a rule that says that if you add a constant to every score, the new mean will reflect that. So the new mean will equal the original plus or minus the constant. When you are assessing the effects on the standard deviation, the new standard deviation, just as we saw with this example, will equal the original. There will be no change in the variability when you add or subtract a constant. Things are slightly different when we multiply or divide. So the new mean, again, we expect a change because we're changing the sum of x. So when we multiply or divide by constant, we can use this rule to understand the effects on the new mean. So it will equal the original, multiplied or divided by the constant. And unlike when we add or subtract a constant, when we multiply or divide, we do see an effect on the variability. So the new standard deviation will equal the original multiplied or divided by the constant. And the reason is that if we're changing distribution by multiplying, we're going to expand the difference between values. So if we're expanding the difference, the deviation is affected and the variability um, should reflect that. Similarly, if we divide by a constant, the space between scores decreases and if the deviation between scores decreases, um, then the variability is being affected and should be reflected in the standard deviation. So instead of um, going through the whole mathematical procedure of finding out the effects on the mean standard deviation, you can simply utilize these rules to, to make that determination. Again, I've used the notation for a sample. The same would be applicable for a population.